Hello everyone. Uh, we are going to discuss um, memory management in our programming languages course. Uh, and this entails uh, various things like techniques for memory management, static memory management, dynamic me memory management using stacks, dynamic memory management using a heap, and then finally implementation of uh, scope rules. Uh, remember or recall that we had earlier talked about scope rules and uh, uh, the scope rules this is this is a concept that really doesn't exist at runtime uh, when we write code we as programmers we're often thinking about or we, we really need to think about the scope rules but then the scope rules must really be implemented by the underlying abstract machine uh, so that it, uh, so simulated at runtime I mean by the underlying uh, abstract machine and f in order for the abstract machine to be able to simulate it there has to be a correct implementation of the scope rules and that's really what we are going to talk, talk about here So, um, memory management, uh, why is that needed? Well, this is one of the functions of the interpreter that is associated with an abstract machine to manage the memory that is needed at runtime. So, it, we need the, the underlying abstract machine needs to manage the allocation of memory for programs and also for the data. And uh, if you recall our uh, uh, diagram for a uh, interpreter that we looked at uh, in the, the very beginning of our course, the memory was divided between uh, memory for the programs itself, in the program that is running, and the memory that is needed for the data that is used by the program at runtime. Now, in general, we can say that uh, uh, if we have, uh, uh, or in the case of hardware, memory, me memory management is really simple because it can be almost entirely static. Well, what do we mean by this? Uh, uh, before we execute uh, the program on, on a hardware machine, the, the machine language of the program and its associated data is loaded into uh, an area of memory and it just remains there until the execution uh, ends. So in that sense we can say it's static, we load it up and it just remains there until, uh, until the, uh, the execution of the program ends. Now if we have a high level language uh, the matters are really more complicated because uh, especially if the language permits recursion because if the language permits a recursion, we cannot statically allocate the data anymore. And we will see why in our discussion. Uh, and one of the problems is that the number of simultaneously active procedure calls uh, can be more than one if we, if we uh, allow uh, recursion. And th so the number of simultaneously active procedure calls can, de can depend on the parameters of the procedures. So if we look at a, a, an example here, this is the famous Fibonacci um, uh, function, which is implemented here using a recursion. So uh, Fibonacci, the Fibonacci re uh, function takes uh, an integer as a parameter. If the value of n the formal parameter is 0, then it returns 1. If the value is 1, it returns 1 also. Else, it returns the result of calling recursively uh, FIP n minus 1 and FIP n minus 2 and adds the two results. Uh, and the number of active calls to FIP here depends really on the value of the argument here. Uh, so we cannot say beforehand, we cannot say statically at compile time uh, 
how many instances of the FIP functions will be alive simultaneously. And uh, that means that we cannot allocate sta statically the memory the memory for, for example, this form formal parameter n here. We need to be able to store it somewhere in memory, and if we decide statically to store it somewhere, then that will not be sufficient because we will need to have many copies of this variable. We will need to have as many copies of this formal parameter as there are simultaneous uh, activations of this uh, program, of, of this function that are running. So if we look at it in more detail, this case of recursion, uh, we can say that every procedure call requires its own memory space to store parameters, intermediate results, return, return addresses and so on. Uh, so if that's the case, static allocation of memory is no longer sufficient because there has to be a saying that every procedure call requires its own memory space, then we cannot statically allocate the memory for that particular procedure because we have many copies of the procedure running at any given time. It is possible to have many copies running at any given time. Uh, so, we really need some kind of a din dynamic memory allocation and deallocations at runtime. And here we come to this term runtime stack. This is really what happens uh, at runtime. There's a special stack that is used to keep track of the activations of the functions. And uh, we will come to this later in this talk that we have a particular record that is called activation record which keeps track of various informations that are associated with any given function call. And in addition to, to the runtime stack, uh, we have a particular memory area that is called a heap and the heap is used when we explicitly or when the programmer explicitly allocates memory. So for example in, in C++ we can explicitly allocate memory with using the new operator which returns a pointer to the allocated object or to the allocated memory address and then we can return back memory by using delete and uh, when we do this we are really allocating and deallocating memory of the heap. Not of the runtime stack, but of the heap. Uh, so if we first talk about static memory management. Uh, static, as we have mentioned before, when we use the term static we are talking about something that happens before execution and normally that is associated with something that happens at compile time. So static memory management is performed by the compiler uh, before execution starts. And statically allocate memory objects reside in a fixed area of memory and remain there while the program is executing. So this is used for something that the compiler can deduce that is uh, that it can uh, put into a, a memory where um, uh, which is a fixed area and it can remain there while the program is executing. And what would be an example of that? Well, for example, global variables. Why, why are global variables uh, static? Well, because there is only a single copy of them alive. So if we, during the execution of the program, if we uh, declare a global variable, then that particular variable is, uh, uh, we only have a single copy of it, and remember it is accessible to every function of a, of a program, 
and uh, we can just or the compiler can allocate a uh, this global variable in a fixed area of memory and it can just remain there while the program is executing so every function that is actually Uh, referencing such a variable let's just have a look what just to, to make sure that uh, we understand what I'm saying when I'm talking about global variables for example in C++ I can declare a global variable uh, by uh, uh, declaring it outside outside main for example so when I have a variable that is outside main it is global and it is then accessible by every function of the program uh, it is accessible by main and it, ac it is accessible by any function uh, that I have uh, declared in, in my program. For example, this function f here would be able to reference this global variable. Now, uh, whenever these functions access this global variable, they are accessing a particular fixed area of memory, which has been allocated statically by the compiler. So this is what we mean by statically, that is something that is allocated by the compiler before um, before the uh, program runs. And uh, uh, notice that uh, there's we there's no need to allocate the memory for this variable dynamically, because it can be can reside in a fixed area. So that would, that's one example of a statically allocated memory object. Another example is the object code of the program itself. When our program is loaded into the memory, it, uh, it loads into a, a specific fixed area of memory and just stays there until execution ends. So there's no dynamic allocation of it. And another example that is mentioned here is, is some tables that are generated by the compiler that may be needed at runtime. So what we're really saying here is that if the language does not support recursion, then information local to a procedure can also be statically allocated. And this is a very important point. If the language does not support recursion, then we can statically allocate memory which is local to a procedure. And what we're talking about here is, for example, local uh, variables and intermediate intermediate uh, variables. So local variable would be a variable like int y in this function f. The temporary variables are something that might uh, be the result of uh, some uh, expressions arithmetic expressions. Let's say let's say this example here here I have an expression that uh, consists of two sub-expressions and the compiler will generate a temporary variable that would hold the first value of the sub-expression and then another temporary variable which will hold the value of the second sub-expression and then these two temporary variables will be added together to form the value for the uh, local variable y here. So that's what we mean by a local or intermediate or temporary variables. And then the uh, the function might have some uh, parameters it has some return address meaning the address in the object code uh, to uh, which will continue running of the program so first we said that we might even have some parameter here now if main calls f then The next statement 
to be executed after f has been called is the statement x plus plus. So we need to keep that address somewhere in memory. This is really the return address, the address to which uh, to jump to, uh, to continue execution after calling f. And that information is usually stored in the so-called activation record for this function f here. And then there are some uh, system information, uh, for example, the values that are stored in registered uh, that need to be uh, saved. Because when we call this function f here, the, uh, or actually, let's say before we call the function f, the, our abstract machine or the underlying machine has, is, in a, is in a particular state meaning that the register has, has some value, the program counter has some value, and so on. Um, and we need to be able to save this, because once f has finished, we need to restore the state of the machine before we execute the next statement, which is x++ here. Now what we're saying here, that if the, if the language in question does not uh, allow recursion, we can really store the information uh, for like the parameter, for the local variable, for the temporary variables and so on, the return address, uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a static way, meaning in a fixed area of memory. Because if, we, if the language doesn't allow recursion, we will not be able to have many simultaneous uh, activations of this function f running. If we don't have any recursion, then only a single copy of f or single activation of f can be running at any given time in the program. So I run f, it, it will finish, I do x++, and then I might run f again here. But the second run, the second activation of f cannot be uh, executed until the first activation of f has been has concluded. So if this is the case, then when whenever we are uh, referring to some uh, temporary variable or a parameter or a uh, variable inside f, we're always referring basically to the same memory because this is a we cannot have a many copies of, of uh, activations running. So, given this, we could implement um, the activation record for the function f, given that it doesn't allow recursion, the language doesn't allow recursion, in, uh, we can implement it using a, a static uh, uh, allocation. So, we, for example, would say that, okay, let's keep uh, one part of, of our storage for this function f uh, for system information, another part of the storage uh, for the return address, the third part would be the parameter of the function, the fourth part would be the local variables, and the fifth part would be the intermediate results. And all this information here would be stored in a fixed area in memory. So, whenever f is called, the, as I said earlier, the parameter is stored in a fixed area, which is here. The local variables are stored in a fixed area, which is here. The intermediate results are stored in a fixed area, and so on. There is just a single copy of this activation record uh, alive at any given time because the language does not support recursion.